This video is a review of the harmonic oscillator chapter of the quantum chemistry and spectroscopy playlist. So we start by looking at the classical harmonic oscillator, which is some particle which experiences a quadratic potential, V of x equals 1 half kx squared. So the force that this exp particle experiences is a linear force which restores it back towards the origin. So when we solve uh, the equations of motion for the system, we get that as a function of time, our system is going to oscillate. It's going to oscillate with some amplitude times cosine omega t, where the frequency here depends on this spring constant k and the mass of the particle m. And the energy is 1 half times the spring constant times the maximum displacement squared. Going on to quantum mechanics, we have the quantum harmonic oscillator model, which we use as a model for the vibrations of diatomic molecules. We have two atoms, each of mass m1 and m2, some distance r apart with some spring constant k connecting them. So we define the quantity x, which is their displacement away from the equilibrium bond length, and the potential is 1 half kx squared, as it was in the classical case. This is a, this is a decent model for the vibrations of chemical bonds near equilibrium, but at further distances away from equilibrium or in high energy states, it's going to become poor because this side is going to get too steep and this side is going to get too low as you go to the wall or the tail of our intermolecular or interatomic potential. The mass that we need to use here for our mass uh, that goes into our, our system ends up being the reduced mass, which is the product of the two masses, m1 times m2, divided by their sum, m1 plus m2. So when one mass is much larger than the other, the reduced mass just becomes the smaller mass, and when the two masses are equal, it becomes half of the original mass. The energy levels for this system, once we solve the Schrodinger equation, depend on a quantum number n, which starts at zero and goes up as an integer, zero, one, two, etc. The energies are equal to Planck's constant times a frequency times the quantum number plus one half, or equal to h bar omega, the angular velocity times n plus one half, where omega equals two pi times the frequency and also equals the square root of the spring constant k divided by the reduced mass mu. So as our frequency, our energies get higher as the spring constant gets bigger and get lower as the mass gets higher. And we also have the ground state, which is slightly above the zero of energy, giving us what's called zero point vibrational energy. This can be used for a model of the infrared spectra of diatomic molecules. So these states form this type of energy diagram and the difference in energy between going between them is equal to Planck's constant times the frequency of a photon. So since our energy levels are evenly spaced under a perfectly harmonic oscillator, there's only one peak in our vibrational spectrum due to our selection rule that the change in the quantum number n is plus or minus one during absorption or emission. Of course, not all molecules are perfectly harmonic. As we see here, they are somewhat anharmonic as, as you get to higher energy levels. And that anharmonicity can be modeled by including things like higher order terms in our Taylor series for the energy here, whether those are cubic, quartic, or even higher level terms. The frequency we get there for our transition in our spectrum is the harmonic frequency n times omega e, the uh, equilibrium frequency or the fundamental frequency, plus the anharmonicity constant xe times omega e times n times n plus 1. So now there's a quadratic dependence depending on the anharmonicity of our true potential energy form that we, that we model here. The wave functions of the harmonic oscillator include a normalization constant, a polynomial set called the Hermy polynomials, and a Gaussian function e to the minus alpha x squared over 2. The value of this exponent and the value inside the Hermite polynomials here is alpha, which is the square root of the spring constant times the reduced mass divided by Planck's constant uh, over 2 pi. Very useful to us in this chapter are even and odd functions, where an even function is symmetric on both sides of the y-axis, and uh, our odd functions are, are anti-symmetric with respect to the origin. So what this allows us to do is that the integral over all space of an even function 
is twice of its integral from 0 to infinity. And the integral over all space of an odd function is going to be 0 due to that anti-symmetry. And then we apply this to, to the harmonic oscillator to look at various expectation values of position and momentum. In three dimensions, the harmonic oscillator extends to this type of potential energy model, where each dimension has its own spring constant and the potential is quadratic in each dimension. If all the spring constants are equal, then the energy levels are just the uh, same expression from the one-dimensional system where we have the sum of our three quantum numbers in x, and y and then z in each dimension. And lastly, we briefly discuss uh, how polyatomic vibrations work, where instead of having a single pair of atoms that are vibrating, we have what are called normal modes, where each of these normal modes represent a quadratic, uh, a quadratic energy dependence on their displacement, and the energy is a sum over all these normal modes, 3n minus 6 of them for an, a nonlinear molecule with n atoms of h times each individual frequency times each individual quantum number plus one half. Links to each individual video in the on-screen annotation and in the description as well.